Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Stallings, you know me here on YouTube as Marauder EX, and as always, I'm your host for Operation Recap. I'm uh, going to throw some stories at your face this week that you may have missed otherwise. Uh, so, just to get started on it, uh, two things from Fantasy Star Online 2. Uh, the sequel to Sega's follow-up Fantasy Star Online that was a actually a big hit on the Dreamcast, uh, one of the first console MMOs. Uh, Fantasy Star 2 has been... Uh, it's been big for a while. It's been released in Japan uh, on one of our previous recap videos. We announced that it would be delayed, but still, more stories coming out of it because it is live in Japan. Uh, two things: um, new costumes are available uh, if you are a Japanese player, uh, based off of Shining Arc, Shining Hearts, Shining Blade, and. Uh, Se uh, Seventh Dragon 2010. Uh, if you are a uh, samurai fan, uh, some really interesting character designs for this. Really, uh, the the art style for for the Shining series uh, drastically changed uh, in, in the the more modern titles, but the the art style is still very interesting. So the character costume designs based off that are really interesting, and the uh, the Seventh Dragon look. Vicious. Uh, very entertaining for that. Uh, also, if you're a, a, a Japanese player, Fantasy Star Online Episode 2 is already in development. It's underway and it's announced that it should be released this summer. Wow, they've already got uh, the first episode. The second episode is going to be out probably around the time we get the first episode. Not quite sure how I feel about that. Uh, I was a big gamer of Final Fantasy XI for a really long time. It was also an MMO. It also had a huge stagnated release between its different regions, which caused a huge amount of animosity between players of different regions, because the newer uh, players from the different regions were always seen as noobs. They were just holding everyone back. Players for the original region, regions were seen as elitists. It was it was a huge mess. I'm really really kind of disappointed uh, for such a stagnant release or stagnated release rather uh, be between the various regions and the fact that they're already going to get an expansion. Uh, it's I'm not entirely sure if expansion is the right word because the episodes for Fantasy Star don't really play the same as your, your typical expansions. But we'll have to wait and see how that goes. So, anyway, uh, next up, if you're a fan of poker and you're a fan of odd conglomerations of characters that would never meet each other in real life, uh, let alone e even in your wildest fanfic, uh, Poker Night 2 is, uh, has been released and the bonuses have been announced. Uh, Telltale Games did uh, poker Night at the Inventory, which was just a poker game, but the characters that you played against were some of the strangest characters ever conceived. Uh, you had uh, Max from Sam and Max, you had Tycho from Penny Arcade. The, these people, what? Uh, this roundup, you've got Brock Sampson from Venture Brothers, one of my favorite shows of all time, by the way. I love that show. Uh, Claptrap from Borderlands, GLaDOS from Portal, and Ash from Evil Dead Army of Darkness. <laughs> and you get to play poker with these guys. This is awesome. Um, also, you get Sam from Sam and Max this time. Uh, you also get, if you pre-order it, you get a bunch of stuff for Team Fortress 2 or Borderlands 2, ranging from Brock Sampson's knife. Uh, just, it, it's, it's all, it's weird. It's weird. But, uh, with typical Valve releases, if you pre-order it, you get stuff in-game, uh, and it is Steam digital distribution only, so if you're not a big PC player, then eh, but uh, it looks fun. Check it out. Uh, Poker Night at the Inventory 1 was hilarious, and Poker Night 2 is, looks like it's just going to continue. Uh, next up, we have an interview, another interview. We've been doing a lot of interviews lately. Uh, Ryan V, the lead designer of Citizens of the Earth. Uh, if you've not heard about this game, check the article out. Uh, it's amazing. It is a very Earthbound inspired RPG. It's going to be coming out uh, on the Wii U. Uh, 
the game looks like it's a complete homage to Earthbound in terms of style, humor, and just everything. It looks like it is the, the ultimate fan homage to Earthbound. And again, it's coming out on a Nintendo console. It, the interview is amazing. Um, just check it out. Check out the game. Uh, if you have not purchased a Wii U, this is almost a selling point. It's an indie game on the Wii U that it's just it's looking fantastic. Uh, this is actually almost a selling point for the Wii U for me. I don't have one yet, but looking at this, uh, it's put me on the fence. So uh, check out that interview. Uh, he was gracious enough to sit down and talk with us. Uh, answer a bunch of our questions about the game and again just as a result of this one interview uh, my interest in Wii U has peaked. Uh, last up, lots of tales of Zillia information. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I love it when we get random random letters put together to form, form names. Uh, tales of Zillia, uh, the European Special Edition was announced. Uh, I believe it's called the Day One Package, Day One Edition. Uh, and that is now available for pre-order. Uh, so if you are a European gamer, pre-order that now uh, be before they run out. Also, a bunch of trailers have come out for it. Uh, an, a second trailer, A Man in Spirit, uh, a couple of battle montages. So lots of Tales of Zilli information. They are ramping that one up into high gear uh, for its release. Uh, really looking forward to that one as well. A huge fan of the Tale series, so uh, the the trailers are just getting me even more psyched. So uh, those are the stories that I wanted to throw at your face this week. Uh, check it out uh, again. Check out OperationRainfall.com for more news, reviews, previews, and good time gamey goodness. Uh, I'm gonna bounce out, so uh, I'll check you guys later. Bye.